All right, guys, I just started recording. Joe Kelly's going to come on in one second. Uh, Faye says Joe's busy watching his own videos and uh, probably watching some cookout documentaries and some freaking how-to DIYs on some steaks. But uh, we're going to we're gonna answer your questions, man. This is a Q&A. So any, anytime you guys have questions, this is – if you have questions as brand-new traders or just any questions at all, definitely put them in here, guys, in the webinars channel um, in Slack chat, and we'll get to them. And Joe's going to help out on the YouTube Live, and we'll help you guys out. Typically, how much do you pay per month for DOS and COBRA? This is, uh, again, specific and also general at the same time. So, Ben's. The, um, I probably spend about one fifth of the money I make on commissions, fees, all that stuff. When it comes to DOS, if you trade, I think it's over 300,000 shares in the given month. Maybe it's more than that. I can't remember. Obviously you get DOS for free. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a structure that they have. And I think every broker does this, but if you trade a certain amount of shares, you're going to get the platform for free. So a lot of high frequency traders or a lot of guys um, like Alex and Bow and stuff and myself or, or others, you know, maybe they, maybe they haven't paid for DOS in a while because they spend so much money on commissions and stuff. But if you're brand new and you only trade a couple times, you're trading under that number, then I think it's like, yeah, yeah, there we go. 250,000 shares a month. There you go. Thank you, buddy. Um, 125 feet. Yep. There you go. Awesome, up, bro? dude. There, is that Joe? What's up, man? Is that Joe? What's up, dude? I was just letting you answer that question. <laughs> He's, let me ask says you you're lowering question. the temperature on the grill. Just let that steak simmer, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's up, man? Dude, hey, what's, what's going on, bro? What's what's going on, big caps? You talk to me. Talk to me. What, what's the spy do? Are we finally getting reality? Is this finally reality? Are people finally understanding what's going on in the world? I don't know. I think everybody just bought the dip right there. <laughs> so everybody buy the dip at 280. <laughs> we're probably gonna go back to highs by tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get a gap up, up to 297 tomorrow and be like, all right, the world's yeah. not on fire, but technically it is. You never know, man. Good never God, man. Know. You never know. Watch, we wake up to like a 1,200 point down tomorrow. The next day it's up 13. Who knows, dude? Bro, here's what I don't get is VTIQ is oh, yeah. following the market. Let's like this, this is the biggest pile of crap company in the world. It's a literal little, like literally it's a shell company. Like they, they even say it like as part of the, like it's, it's a turd. It's a giant turd. Dude, and I, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm guessing Crex is going to be the one that dies. Oh, wait, no, they got that forward looking event. That's a tough call. They've got like earnings tomorrow. What's going to die today, man? Every time we give this webinar, something tanks. What's going to die? What, what's no. running right now? I can't even remember the runners. <laughs> yeah, Spy's going to go. These webinars are getting know, so man. powerful that I think Spy's going to start tanking. <laughs> I don't even know. Dude, how's your trading been though? It's been all right, man. It's not a lot of, uh, I had BYND uh, for a few days and then, and then, uh, and then after that, just been scalping around. So yeah, same man. It's, it's catch, just kind of a scalper's market. I didn't catch any of the tank today and anything because I was away from the screens. And then all of a sudden I get the alert on my phone that, vtiq broke the price that i wanted to like start shorting yeah and so i'm like sprinting back to the screen and i'm like yes yes Dude. and then we get the and then we get the initial pullback on the first red day and then it just turns into a big pile of bullshit <laughs> so, i love it man now we're here Dude, so I got a lot, I got so many PMs on this this week. I actually wanted to talk about this for a second if we don't have too many questions. And I know, Joe, you could corroborate this, man, because this is one of our favorite setups, especially like because oh, it's I such a trendy thing. It. Dude, when people ask me, hey, you know, and I'm sure you get asked this literally daily, you know, and, and if you're a trader, man, who's part of MIC or you're not, and you're like, dude, how do you know or what's the safest bet to trade the open as a short bias trader, right? I want to make this very clear. Outer lines, for those who are not familiar with what an outer line is, what we are waiting for is the perfect 
the, basically the perfect entry. So with CYCC today, I wanted to explain my thinking because it was so, it was probably the stress, the most stress-free trade, dude, I've taken and I can't remember how long. So if you guys are hitting weakness, right? If you're just hitting out, you know, right here, you're going to get squeezed all the time because hitting lows never did anybody anything. You got to wait for these, these pops into baggies. So if I understand trend on CYCC, a lot of longs are stuck. This is the first stop. This is the first, you know, part of the equation, right? Like, like, is this the hot chick of the day? Well, it doesn't look like it, man. It may have looked like it when it was doing this, but once it put on this massive, massive top, this was literally the moment where I was like, dude, this is going to open so far from its highs that if we can start getting anywhere near five, that's an outer line. That's what I want. So what happened was, man, is I threw a starter in here. I hit this spike because that's the relief pop spike into baggies. And then, dude, once it did this death candle, I can't make this any more clear in my webinars. This is where it gets stress-free, and I'll tell you why. This is where all the longs bail. It's the biggest red candle of the day, especially in the open. This is where I scale pops. Like, so I'm hitting somewhere in here. And then guess what I'm doing? You have predefined risk above said death candle. And if you want to be a little bit more generous, you literally could do a top of the stuff. But I always give to the top of the death candle just in case. So check this out. I want you guys who are short bias traders, who are trying to understand the open and understand how to trade, I want you to focus on two things that are very, very specific going forward. And I, I, I can't make this any more clear. Wait for outer lines. So I want you to not just hit, you know, where I did it for you. I want you to wait for that outer line. I want you to wait for five. If it does not come, wait for the death candle, scale the pop, Put your hard stop above the death candle. This is what I do every single day for five years. I, I it, Dude, it's like, it's like the easiest setup in known to man, in my opinion. Everybody's different. It's my comfort level. It's very simple. It's got defined risk. So what you do is you wait for outer lines or you wait for the squeeze and then the death candle. I can't be any more clear. Joe, how do we be any more clear, dude, to build your account? Wait for outer lines or pass. If that doesn't come, wait for a squeeze at any point of the day that puts in a death candle after, hit the bounce, set the stop above where the top was. Dude, oh, I, exactly. I'm trying to make this as simple for people as possible, bro. Yeah, I, I didn't even know Tosh liked this setup. And we were sitting in Philly at the meetup and, or the big boot camp. And I remember watching Jagex. And oh, yeah, I remember that, Joe. This, yeah, I remember that. He had this same chart, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to short the piss out of this. And Tosh is like, really? You like these setups, too? And we're like, oh, dude, this is like my bread and butter. Like, I will short <laughs> everything on this setup. Everybody likes to short, like, the big gappers. Yep. Like, you know, that's opening at the pre-market highs. It's like doing all kinds of funky shit. Dude, the best setup is that setup right there on CYCC. Dude, how much how much more clear can you absolute get? Absolute best short setup. Joe, there's no better setup, dude. The trend is laid out. You have outer lines or a death candle, and you just get in on the pop, and then you define your risk right there. Dude, what are you – look, if you – okay, let's break this down. Dude, you, I've actually tracked this setup. Because, you know, most people, if you don't know about me on, like, if you're watching YouTube, I'm a big fan of, like, data tracking. Yes. It's just how my mind works. He's huge, I've dude. Tracked he's, he's great this, at it. I've tracked this setup. The win rate is 92%. Short the piss out of the morning push. Nine out of ten are going to fade all day long. Yep. And here's the thing. And here's the thing, Joe, this is the best part about why this is for newer traders. Dude, if you don't have the confidence to hit while this is going up, wait for the death count. That's the huge moment of weakness. 607 million, or sorry, 607,000 volume came out of this. That's huge, dude. That's huge in the first three, six minutes. Wait yep. for the yes, pop what? back up. Dude, say you put in a thousand shares, Joe, say you put in a thousand shares at 466 with a stop out at 488 dude you are risking 200 dollars. where did it go where did it fucking go i'm not even gonna look at that anymore like bro, i'm not even gonna look at that i'm gonna literally put the order and walk the fuck away bro but set I a hard stop care. right here go grill all day with joe in dallas get on a plane yeah. go <laughs> grill set your fantasy orders and you are risking 200 to make 600 dollars or more yep 
100%. That's called a three to one risk reward. Guys, you got to learn this shit, man. You know, it's funny though. This setup is not in a single person, like in any gurus, online gurus, DVDs. Dude, they, they don't know how to trade, bro. They it never will never be. They've never talked about this setup. And the reason why I know they've never talked about it is because I've seen all those, I've seen all those DVDs. I've got access to all of those. I've seen them all. Oh, yeah. No one talks about this setup. Nobody talks about it. So the only place you can learn how to trade this is MIC. We're the only people that trade it, and we're the only people that know how to trade it. Dude, Everybody honestly. Everybody else goes, it's down too much. There's no more opportunity. Fucking hell, man. This is like the best opportunity right Bro, here. when people Guys. are blaming it on like, oh, you know, summer's coming or illiquid, I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? This has been every single day. Yep. I've been, yep. I've been making easy, stress-free money every single day doing the process I built for five years. Like, what do you I mean? I call this setup like, the this pre-market is... fader. Bro, yep. this can't get any more clear if you're too scared to wait for the outer lines, which, look, is commendable. If you're not ready to scale the front side because maybe I have a bigger account um, and I'm willing to scale up to maybe 520, if you're not willing to do that, just wait for this yep. and hit the pop. Yep. Dude, Sometimes we're doing this. We're doing that. this on YouTube as well for non-members. I just showed you an A plus strategy I've been using for five years. Yep. Some, <laughs> sometimes you don't ever get that death candle though. Sometimes you just get that slow fade into like nothing. And yes, just like, that is true. It'll give you like this tiniest little blip at the open, and then it just does nothing and just fades for the rest of the day. Just slow. Yep. Tick for tick for tick until there's no left there's until basically it's red on the day well and joe here's a beautiful thing right this is why we preach guys that if trading is like a bus station and and you miss a bus dude there's always another bus if this is the only setup you ever wanted to attack but you wanted to hit hard and i mean i mean i mean you can hit harder because there's predefined risk and but you've got to put your risk in check if you wanted to you could hit as hard as you want on this, but you better stop out when it goes above this level because that's when the chart is telling you to. Dude, hit harder on this and only hit this setup when it comes. Maybe it comes three times a week, but it made it worth waiting for those only three trades. You see what I'm saying? Just like, short it all the way to pre-market highs. It'll eventually work. I'm just <laughs> yeah, seriously. Dude, I'm, I'm, it, it's so true, man. It's nine times, dude, nine times out of 10, if not almost 10 times out of 10, it will not break 552 if it's got this kind of overhead. This is why I'm willing to scale. Actually, Joe, let me pull up my chart, dude. I, I totally piked it today because I get so unbelievably um, overwhelmed with PMs and, and prepping for the webinar that, dude, I just don't hold, I don't hold winners like I used to. Back in the day, dude, I would have hold this to 504. I would have held this tomorrow, but I just, there's so much to focus on, man. But here's the point, guys. Dude, you could set a hard stop walk away. So if I'm willing to hit this, where did I hit? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Literally, <laughs> like, I hit it at probably 477. I may be willing to scale up to 515. Yep. Because I know that the chances of this getting up here are almost impossible. And then, again, like I said, I don't even do this anymore that much, but I should. Set a hard stop, bro. Leave your house. What's the most you're going to lose? 200 bucks on a thousand shares, 2000 shares, 400 bucks. Yep. Which brings me to the next one. If you are brand new, um, uh, what was this? CBay? These are the account builders. Got Look at this pike, dude. I literally got those covers and piked out. Insane. This is the account builder, man. Joe and I talk about this every single week, bro. Go with broken stocks. I just showed you, showed you how to short the pop after a death candle. This is what's called a low hanging fruit. You see these, these lines, bro. These are yep. tops to short because these are previous resistance levels. I just eyeballed that dude. These, these are, I literally just went where the tops are tops, top, top, boom. I would scale those three lines and then I cover on the wash because the chance of this going is very small, but then you do risk. So I would put my risk above five. I would put my hard stop there. Yep. And yes, I would size down on these for those who are wondering, because I get this question all the time. I would size down a lot more on these because I want to give crazy room. Account what builders, man, will teach you this coming trader. in MIC. What if you are a long bias trader? How do you approach CYCC? Oh, yeah, well, the that's, that's is where you patience comes in. Don't approach it. You walk away from it. This is like, 
this stock has corona and you need to social fucking distance yourself from it. Again, guys, the worst thing you can do in trading, the absolute number one worst thing I'm convinced after seven years is you, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got a runner. Hold on. Damn you, Woody. Oh no. Oh no. Dude, I'm about to run to the other room. Don't you make me. (laughs) Nah, this is too illiquid. What's going on with it? I don't know this. Oh my God. There's like no volume. Yeah, dude. Honestly, if this had volume, that's what I want. Terrible daily chart. That, I mean, that's a poll, dude. Let's see how much vol- eight. But see, here's the difference, guys. Here's the difference. Do not short this pop. Here's why. 85,000 volume came out. This could rip right back to five. There's no volume. This is not conformed. This is, this is finding its identity. It's kind of a liquid, but dude, that is sexy. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about, baby. These yeah, death but- candles, man. You could have hit that pop, literally. But it's just not enough volume. So back the to point CYCC. Going- the-, uh, the point going back is the worst thing you can do possible in your trading career is be a contrarian is to buy this because you think it's on sale and to short cracks, you know, here because you think it's because it's up enough. The the worst thing you can do is be a contrarian and fight trend, dude. You're going to find yourself stopping out again and again. The reason why I hit this short and only hit the short is because the trend was intact. I mean, dude, literally draw a line. Look at this. Bro, if you need to do that in the open, just do it. There's just no reason to, for some reason, people get this impression that there is always a long side to the trade. And sometimes there's fucking not. Yeah, sometimes there's literally, oh, it's an offering. Same goes for the short side. Sometimes there is no reason to short at all. There's no reason to short. And longs are like, oh, yeah, well, I'm longing the shit out of this. Hey, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yes. But on something like CYCC, do not be looking at this trying to short it. Like, there's nothing here, or trying to long it. There's nothing here on the long side that says, buy me. The only time it says, buy me, is like a new pre market high. Like, every single thing past that. Trend is fucking broken. Yeah, and here's the thing. Here's the thing, man. If this showed extraordinary strength, I mean, God over VWAP started making dips, dip, and then it's trading up here, maybe. But dude, until that happens, this is a short, bro. There's not much more opportunity on this after 10:30. Then I'm just not going to touch it. That's exactly right. There's no edge. It's not a short. It's not a long. It's a nothing. It's a fucking nothing. You walk away and look away. It's nothing. It's exactly right, bro. It's exactly fucking right. Any other questions, guys? Any other specific charts? We just showed you two amazing strategies that we use to build accounts. And actually, I talked about the first Red Day in a lot of detail earlier. So now you got three on a free webinar. On a free webinar. (laughs) On a free webinar. Offering isn't something you can rely on. Just brought, yeah. Those three scales, how would you divide it? So, so he's talking about yeah. my chart. Let me go back just so people can see yeah. what we're talking about. Um, talking about I go, you got to go bigger size, okay. in my opinion. Uh, everybody has, a, you know, a method to their madness. What I do is I go bigger. So uh, for new guys, what I would do is if you are brand, I'll keep it really simple for the new guys who have small accounts because this is an account builder strategy. If you guys started with 100, I like the next one to be 150 for you. And then I would like the next one to be 200 so you can get that average up. So by the time it does break, you've got a really good average. Joe, I don't know if you disagree yep. with that or not. You can no, go even scales. I actually did a video on this a long time ago in the library. Yeah. That I call it the one-fifth method. Yeah, and, yes, exactly. And me and Tosh talked about this, and that's where that video was born from is – we use one fifth methods and the one fifth method is at your lower line, you use one fifth of the size that you would at your outer line. So if Tosh wants to use 200 shares at the third outer line, I'm literally going to use like 50 shares at the first line, like that first line, 50 shares, next line, hundred shares. Third line, 200 shares. That's yes. the real size. And, and yeah. 
So well, sometimes, it, sometimes, <clears throat> unfortunately, guys, like I'm just going to get a starter on here. That first yep. triangle might only be 500 shares. That's and the, in that's, the beginning, like in the beginning, when you don't have a big account and you're just trading small size, like it feels petty. You know, like you're like, who got 50 shares on fucking hell? This ain't even worth it. But dude, when you do that time and time and time again with consistency, yep. it still builds your account, but also it builds your emotional account, your emotional confidence in your process. That is just as important as physical money just as important. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. You got to level up organically, man. If you guys are trying to throw a thousand out the gate, bro, you got to understand I'm giving till like literally maybe 60 cent room to scale, dude. I'm not trying to throw um, a thousand here all the time. I'm not trying to get, if, if 5,000 shares max, dude, you got to understand how to share. If 400 scales max, it matters on the account size. Dude, sometimes my first triangle might only be five to 700 shares. Because I'm giving room, dude. But here's the thing: if it breaks down, yep. sure, I'll get a you know a, a nominal win. I'll get a I'll get a little bit, but it builds good habits. I'm still sticking to my plan because when it goes up here, I'm like, good. It's it's now giving me the chance to get more. But yep. averaging up and scaling a little bit more each triangle, you know, triangle, so to speak, quote unquote, or entry <laughs> is going to help. Yeah, triangle. Each triangle. Just <laughs> But dude, like in the beginning, me and Tosh aren't going to bullshit you. In the beginning, we probably used 50 to 100 shares at that first line. Fuck, maybe 25 shares. Dude, like, are you kidding me? Hell yeah, you got to freaking learn this shit, dude. When I was fucking poor. I mean, yeah, that was it. Bro, you want to hear the best part? Listen to this. Listen to this, Joe. I have a guy that I'm talking to right now. Listen to this, bro. $60,000 account. Uh-huh learning the day two strategy that we're talking about. Guess what he's starting with? 50 shares. I hope you're going to tell me 50 shares. 50 shares. Guess $60,000 account, bro. Good. He doesn't have ego. He goes, That's dude, I have to get comfortable doing this. I have, I have a question for Faye if she's here, okay? Tay, mama. Hey, mama Tay. This is so mama Faye, Tay for anybody who don't know. Faye, during your first trade... Your first few weeks of trading, what was your average starter size? Great question. And she's a swing trader, mind you 50 guys. 50 shares was Faze. Tay, she's, she's already rich. She don't need Yeah, Tay, Tay's she's already made her, with her 5, <laughs> shares. Like, <laughs> Guys, Faye was using 50 shares. Yep. And in 50 shares, in 50 share increments, after consistency, yeah, and Vic started with 100, once you build that mental confidence in your process, the money means nothing. It's like Austin talked about in one of his webinars. He said, if somebody switched around your size and you didn't know, would you trade it any differently? No. If I didn't know how many shares I was in and I thought I held the same size, I would trade it the same right? I wouldn't trade it any different. Mind you guys, Joe Kelly's talking about if somebody like literally just happened to manipulate or count, he, he wouldn't even know. He's just trading it because he's trading his process in the chart. He's not trading the size as the P and L. That's the whole point. Yeah. It's the art form. Yeah. And so when you reach a level of consistency, now here's the deal. If you're trading small size and you're and you're like justifying random trades with small size, you're never going to reach consistency. If you're like, well, I'm going to go trade a first bounce today and then a death line tomorrow and then a first red day and then a VLAP reclaim. And then you're like trading like all of this stuff that you normally wouldn't trade. It's never going to work for you. You have to focus on one way of trading. One way. One way. That's it. Trading is as much art as it is a science, man. But you got to fall in love with the art. People that come to this career only for money 
you burn out quick, man. You, because, yeah. because it can be very hard and challenging because then you're not obeying process and you're literally just a money chaser. Dude, when you, get, when you get familiar with the process, when you get familiar with why you should be scaling, where you should be scaling, where you should be cutting, you are so in love with what the art form is of trading that, dude, the money just comes, man. It just, it's almost like law of attraction or it's almost like you earned it like energetically or some shit. But dude, the point is, is like, just focus on the art. The money will take care of itself man yeah 100 percent, bro 100 percent, bro you trade p and l you're just you're just kind of doomed man i'm sorry you just, i mean there are guys who make it just trading p and l but it's a it's a harder road man it really is you got to take the logic out of it somewhat and really put the heart and soul into man i'm learning this because i want to get good at this dude when i when i found the death count strategy so when i found um cycc bro if if the market close or i'm sorry if say real money what, let's say retail traders under a hundred million just weren't able to trade, right? Just say for the sake of the argument, like only billionaires can be traders. And granted, we wouldn't have these setups if that was the case, but in this, you know, fantasy land and, and we could only trade like 10 shares for the rest of our lives or paper money, dude, I'd still trade this for fun because it's such an art form. I love it, dude. I, I trade this to my dying day, like a video game. Like it's not even the money. It's it's so much fucking fun, dude. It's because I know what I'm doing given a certain setup. You know what I mean? Bro, well, one hundred percent. It's it, it's the ultimate video game, dude. And the only way to get good in a video game is to not die and <laughs> to learn the levels, dude. To learn the levels and 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 not freaking jump down the rabbit hole or the sharks are gonna kill whatever, dude. Whatever. I don't know. It's, the only way I got good at Call of Duty was getting killed a lot. <laughs> Dude, the only way I got good at Call of Duty, man, is when I got a freaking like 10 person team, man, and, and they're all covering me and I'm getting kill streaks. And right. You need a lot of, oh, dude, see, Call of Duty, man, when you got your boys with you, which is MIC, you the go. community behind you, you're going to kick ass. Yeah, that was funny. What day does Joe do trader calls? Joe does it on a schedule basis. So, like, when people reach out to me, I do it because I do a lot of screen shares with lifetime members. So that is one of the features that we offer here is um, some of us will, uh, I know Tosh and, and Alex do a trader clinic or a mentorship once a month with lifetimes. Um, but me and Tom Diesel do personal one-on-one -on -one screen shares with the individual member themselves as lifetime members. Hell yeah. And so, um, like I've done, I've done one with Faye when we talked about large caps and swing trading, and then here she is in fucking large caps kicking my ass now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then I do them with, with a lot of other lifetime members and I just do it on a need on a needs basis. So if they, if they have questions or if they need something clarified, boom, there you go. I'm, I'm here for you. And I have never once told anybody I wasn't going to do a webinar with them when they're a lifetime member. That is one of the features. My time is dedicated to those people 100%. Well, thank you, Joe Kelly. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, look at Chris. <laughs> Joe, you want to, should we, uh, before we wrap this up, man, should we, I, cause I think we're dwindling down on questions, but you want to talk about the, uh, the accelerator course and what that is? Yep, sure. So for everybody that uh, doesn't know or missed out, it, uh, missed out on Tosh talking about it in the beginning of the video, what the uh, Accelerator course is, is it's a new course we put together. I re-recorded everything. It's now seven hours and 45 minutes, condensing every piece of educational content from MIC and the process, teaching you straight from Ground zero, you don't need to know anything about trading, taking you to self-sufficiency, doing everything on your own. This is not teaching you how to find a pattern. This is not teaching you this pattern. This is not teaching you how to track data. This is not, I literally walk you through and hold your hand all the way through to the end on exactly what you need to do and what you need to avoid and don't even focus time and energy on. And we condense that down to seven hours and 45 minutes. So basically one full work day, one full work day of this video, watching this video, and you will have the process that we, you need in order to be a self-sufficient trader. That's it. That's all you need. 
Dude, I love it. So if anybody has questions on what that is, man, we <laughs> I'm face excited for the other 45 minutes. What that is, is we're, it's a, it's a free upgrade before June 1st, man. We are going to literally include it in the annual and lifetime upgrades guys. And then after we're figuring it out, but to get access to that lifetimes have it right now, if you want to upgrade, you know, just DM me or text, you know, at two, one, three, four, five, eight. Uh, and then we'll get you access to that, man. It's going to help you out. It's going to help you out. You'll get access to the DVD in about a, I, I, Joe, what this sometime this month, probably like a week or two weeks. Um, um, I'm told it's going to be, uh, this month, but which week it falls in, I don't know. It may be next week or it may be the week after next, but it will be during May. We're just waiting back, uh, waiting to hear back from on the coding side of everything is we have to build the landing pages and build the permissions because it's not going to be available to everyone. It's only going to be available to lifetime members and then annuals. And annuals will be able to come in and watch it, but uh, after a short period of time, it will not be available to any new annuals. Okay, Everybody will previously get grandfathered in, that has an annual membership and a lifetime yes. membership to it. After that point though, it will not be available to anyone uh, that is an annual. Um, after that point, uh, what we do with it, I'm not sure. Um, it will still stay available, but it may come at a price for annuals after that point. Yeah, so we're giving you guys plenty of time, man. We're giving you over a full month to just, just basically upgrade right now to get access to this forever but you got to do it before june 1st man we're giving you guys some time and and i think it's worth i think mic archive is worth a loan to upgrade but if you want this unbelievable accelerator course then hit me up right now we'll get you upgraded and we'll get you access to that very very soon uh but again lifetimes if you want to go that route um then you'll get it right now there as they're beta testing it would you long corrects there at your line for a bounce or leave it because it's already broken down? I would say no because of the time of day. I was just going to say that, Joe. Under VWAP this time of day is very, I, I don't know. It's just, it's so no man's land, man. Yeah, it's not an ideal time to be trading on the long side. Or the short side, actually. Yeah, both. And, and it's at a support line, so it's not a short. This is one of those no trade situations. Like, 100% right. Not because there's just no edge. There's really support. no edge in it. So yeah, here, no here's the thing, James. Is it setting up for a fantasy order for a low-hanging fruit in the pre-market a good idea or wait for the open? Um, wait for the open. Now, as pertaining to this, the only reason why I don't love this today is, like I said, guys, tomorrow, I think they have earnings after hours. So it's kind of forward-looking, right? Like this thing, I'm sure people were shorting at 320 and stuff for the last like two weeks into these moves. But they were kind of accumulating, it looks like, until this kind of earnings. So tomorrow might be kind of sell the news or die off. So maybe outer lines, if this kind of gaps down tomorrow into the fives, we will see given the morning. But this could be a low-hanging fruit, but I will be cautious as, like I said, they have earnings after hours. Now, if I look at their daily chart, I'm like, dude, what do I expect from this Chinese company right now during this whole pandemic and with this kind of history? Probably some doo-doo. But, you know, again, we don't want to assume or anticipate. We want the confirmation. So be careful, guys. I don't like this one just because they're releasing earnings tomorrow after hours. But just be, be careful, man. Just be careful. Um, yes, but James, in general, wait for the open, man. Pre-market is just a nightmare. Um, it's usually a liquid or at least more than the open. A lot of traders do not trade pre-market. Anytime I've done in the last like seven years, I've just honestly, man, never really found consistency over the long haul. I'd win, 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 then lose and give it back. If I'm calculating the pre-markets, wait for the open, man. I've got such a big success rate in the open versus fucking pre-market. Pre-market's kind of a, look, there's traders who can do it, man. It's just, it's a lot of the teachings that we do at MIC. It's, it's just not really one of our strategies, man. Neither, neither Bao nor Alex. If there is one exception, and that would be the low hanging fruits, there is one. Um, like you said, you know, is it a good idea? Every now and then, if a low hanging fruit is gapping up huge pre-market, then yes, I will probably put on, but like Joe was saying, dude, if, if intraday we're scaling one fifth, I may throw on just one tenth, dude, if it's pre-market, but it's got to have a nice gap uh, into, because then, you know, if it opens at fucking 484 and I started in at 480, you know, that's already awesome. I would have wanted that as a, as an outer line come 
be open. So maybe I could have, you know, kind of almost front run the short a little bit with a gap up. You know what I mean? I obviously it's not really the correct term, but I mean, I can get a leg up on what I already wanted intraday. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I, I think you agree on that, Joe, right? Do you do the same? Yep. Uh, NNBC. Oh, uh, is there a video just on VWAP? Joe, can yes. you corroborate that? Do we have a video literally just on VWAP or, or is it just yep. kind of an amalgamation of all our videos? Yeah, I know it's there. Okay, we got one. Uh, let's see what NNBC did. Pretty sure that Tom Oops. made one titled How to Use VWAP in Your Trading. Yeah, there you go. Um, oh, wow, this is making a big move. Crazy. What the hell? Yep, yep there you go. Here's the, here's the thing with NNVC I didn't like. So I never liked these guys. Again, it's just literally a personal preference. I think, Joe, I think you're a little bit different. I think you do like these, but I don't. So I don't like gap downs. If it's a gap down on a low hanger, I don't touch it. I like even keel or I like gap up. So I don't touch these. But if you do, always remember, use the tops. And this was kind of a top set by after hours, gaps down. That's a good resistance level. So if you scaled into that, you can use that as a hard stop. But I'm just not a fan of gap downs, man. I never was. It's got to be up a lot. And honestly, NNVC is just not up enough. Um, for me, though, it's like a gap down is fine, but I only trade the first 30 minutes. So... Like after this, I wouldn't ever be in NNVC at all for any reason. Yeah. I just, yeah, honestly, NNVC. I just like the first day. And dude, just to talk about again, what I talked yeah. about earlier, let's just show it one last time. There's the death candle. Oh, and it's complemented by a stuff as well. So if we zoom yeah. in, let's see, where do you scale? Oh, the pop. Where do you put your hard stop? Oh, not rocket science, the top of the debt, predefined risk. There's your, there's your strategy. I hit this yesterday. And then guess what? Look at how much downside you had. Look what you're risking. That's, dude, that's like a six to one. Yep. And that is how you stay safe on the short side. Wait for the, dude, just wait for these tells, man. The guys that are getting squeezed in this, bro, you got to be careful, man. You got to be, wait for these massive dumps, dude. Well, yeah, like what happened, you know, I think Alex took a little bit on the front side and then dude, he slammed it back when it's stuff like this because that's the indicator. So unfortunately, you know, a squeeze is going to get you every now and then. It just will. So that's why we put a hard stop and then you can always read attack. What the fuck is happening right now? It must be the webinar. <laughs> Let's see how it reacts at the 1060. That's some clear resistance. Dude, what is going on tomorrow, man? This is going to be in play. Dude, I hope we get a gap up to like 15, man. God, that'd be sick. Who's got questions? Who's got questions? We're dishing them out. Joe, what's on the grill, man? Man, nothing tonight. I did actually had a salad today. <laughs> Dear Lord, who are you and what have you done with the Texan? Yeah, right. <laughs> Now my, uh, my wife was like, I'm going to go to Chick-fil-A and get a salad. You want one? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll take one. So oh my God, dude. Alex just reminded me. Did you guys see what happened in, uh, in pre-market this morning, bro? Joe, did you no, see what I happened with it. Alex's Forex story? No. Bro, for any of those who don't know, Alex is unbelievably triggered at the word of forex why because dude everybody that comes to you on instagram everybody that sends you a dm i can turn your thousand dollars into ten billion dollars using forex and pips and all that bullshit dude it's such a scam so obviously we teach equities alex has been trading equities for seven years dude one of his family members comes to him the other day and he's like bro i'm gonna join this forex room and alex is like dude why would you do that i there's i've been telling people for years it's a scam it's an obvious scam do you know anybody that makes forex money and he's like dude i really i know you do what you do but i want to go for it. his own family member dude i think like a family friend he's like what the fuck dude oh They're man so, they're related to Alex and he's willing to teach them and they still want to go do it on their own. Bro, you make I, a fortune just sitting and breathing Alex's air in New Jersey right behind him at his desk and he wants bro, to, and, he, and he's got the goal to try it for it. Bro, that's hysterical. I'd cut off my right hand to be <laughs> able to like 
just do that as like i mean i'm like are you fucking kidding me joe will cut off both of his hands and learn how to trade with his feet just to trade in the same room as alex you know what dude alex that's just dude alex what do you think should we should we throw a promotion this week man should we help people out let's do let's do a forex what do you think let's do let's do a forex promotion man i'm telling you right now dude i'm gonna talk we're gonna do something we're gonna do this is too funny bro guys special code is i won't trade forex <laughs> yeah, literally, literally text me that. So guys, I'm, t I'm going to give you a code one day secret code promotion. I need you to text me. I won't trade Forex and I'm going to hook you up. We're going to talk <laughs> about your options. I'm going to get on the phone with you. We are here to help. This is a secret code only for this webinar. This is not public. Well, it's public to you, the viewers. This is not going to be available past today. This is a Wednesday thing. It's only for you guys because, dude, you just listened to me rant for two hours. I'm going to try to reward you. If you're already a member, we can upgrade you at some, we'll figure something out. If you're non-member, reach out to me and we'll get you started in the club and we'll figure it out. But, I, but I'm not going to answer the text unless it's I won't trade Forex first. <laughs> well, I, I won't answer it with a promotional link. Then they'll, they, they will get regular price. We're trying to help, man. We're trying to help as much as we can. And at MIC, dude, we are here to reward, bro, the people who are literally going to listen to us talk or rant for two hours. I hope you guys learned something new today, man. If anything, you can, you can bank on the fact that Alex's cousin's probably going to get smoked trading pips. <laughs> but... <laughs> Sorry to say, Alex, dude, you got to keep us updated on that, man. That was one of the funniest stories I've ever heard, dude. That is insane. Oh, um, yeah, it's uh, Nadzer. Just, uh, you can just PM me here if you're a member. Just PM me here. It, guys, if you're a non-member, you can, you, can, you can text that number, the 213-458-5997. If you're a member, you could just hit me in chat. Um, yeah, no problem. And if you're overseas or Europe or out of the country or Canada or whatever it is, just use WhatsApp. Yeah. Yeah. Or guys, or you can even hit my Instagram. Hold on. I'll even, I'll even put it. I'm going to give you all forms of communication. If you need to reach me, T Bradley 90 underscore trader on IG. There are many ways to get a hold of me. I, I'm willing to, you know, we'll figure T out a Bradley way. I'll get on the phone with you. You can reach T through Bradley me. Through text. 90. Oh shit. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. T. Bradley, 90. Got to put that 90. And then Tosh at my investing club. Um, no dick pics. I don't condone. I don't ignore, but I don't condone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ignore, but I, I don't ignore, but I don't condone. condone. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, love you, man. This is, what the, this is what the club's all about, man. This is fun as hell. I, dude, this is the funnest part of my week is coming in here and laughing with you guys. And honestly, dude, it brings the biggest joy to our lives, man. Like teaching you guys, bro. I want you to win. I want you to be consistent. I don't want you to get chopped up, man. I want you to know how to do predefined risk. Get the three to one, get the six to one. Dude, we are learning. We are growing together. Stop fighting stocks. Don't be a contrarian. Don't short this shit just because it's up. And do not buy things like CYCC just because it's down, dude. This is, look at this. This is not a buy, dude. Tomorrow, I'm going hard on this low-hanging fruit if we can get pops back up to 450 and 470, dude. Uh, so, <laughs> dude, what the hell is a pip? <laughs> uh, I don't even know what Scottie a pip Pippen? is, dude. Is that Scotty Pippen? <laughs> Scotty Pippen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> short, short the Magic Johnson and long the Scotty Pippins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe, guys, I love you, bro. We'll, we'll talk next week, man. We we'll enjoy. get you on next week. We'll do this all over again, bro. We enjoy seeing you win, but uh, we just want it to not be as much as us. I'm looking at you, Faye. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Talking you, to you, yeah, Faye. Well, that's directly correlated to Faye. Faye, we yeah. love that you're winning, but stop making win, us look bad. Not as much as me, so talking to you, Faye. <laughs> We're talking to you and Vic, dude. We're talking to you and Vic. <laughs> oh, man, I love it, dude. All right, see you guys. Enjoy your nights, man. See you, Joe. Later. <laughs>